Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bob Stoops app. I'm Brad McMullen, along with Hall of Fame football coach Bob Stoops. And, Coach, Week 11, we've got some great games, especially the Sooners in prime time, traveling to Missouri. And this is a good Missouri team that beat Vandy and Auburn earlier this year. Well, first of all, excuse my voice. It's coming back little by little all week. But uh, I never felt bad, but lost my voice somehow. But um, I, I like the Sooners. I... Uh, I think back to all the games with Missouri. They're a good football team. Uh, Drink, uh, Durkowitz, Drinkwitz, yep. Drinkwitz has done a heck of a job with them. So, um, bottom line, um, but I think we're catching a rhythm. I hope. I believe. Of course, I would. Everyone knows that. And uh, with play calling, with the offense, Jackson Arnold the last couple weeks, Defense has been solid, really good, and that's what's going to have to happen. But I, I like the Sooners. I think uh, we'll play a heck of a, a, a big defensive game with some big plays. Um, our, our special teams have been solid and really good. That has to happen. Take care of the football on offense and, you know, you score 20, 24 points and have a win. Yep, and that's the Barry White rendition of Barry how White. the Sooners yeah. are going to do this weekend. Yeah. Vegas agrees with you, Coach. Oklahoma favored on the road at night at Missouri by two and a half points. I think the key here goes back to what you've said all along. Don't have stupid penalties. Don't turn the ball over. And, oh, you can beat anybody. Yeah, that's the – don't put yourself in a hole. Turnovers and then, and then penalties put you in a hole. On offense especially, or even defense, giving them a – 15-yard free big play. You, you can't do that. So if we play a clean game, I, I feel this point in the year they'll be able to do that. Uh, I love what we've done the last two weeks. I get it. Last week was Maine. I understand. But you could still gain some positives and some momentum from playing well. And then I hope it carries over. And, and comparing the Maine game to the Temple game, oh, you struggled against Temple on third down. Oh, you did not struggle. Uh, against Maine on third down, and you could see a lot of push from the front offensive line, much of what you saw against Ole Miss as well. Well, and that's what, you know, O-line maybe at this point in the year starting to come together a little bit, a little more run game. Uh, you know, we've been strong there the last couple games. Joe John Finley getting a rhythm, calling plays, and the players getting used to him. Anyway, you know, you just hope it, it can continue. Obviously, this is a crucial game because of the bowl streak that Oklahoma has that dates all the way back to when this guy was coaching in 1999. And it's hard to believe, Coach, when you look at that streak, how impressive it is in college football. Well, everyone thinks everybody does well all the time. And they it's do. really not the case. Mm -hmm. If you look at every program around the country, I think we have the longest bowl streak. I'm, I'm not sure. But point being, a lot of people will have a down year here and there, or several down years. And since 1999 through now, we have not had that. You know, so, you know, hopefully we can, you know, be on track this week and keep it going. And one of the things that Oklahoma needs on their side is some healthy bodies, and it appears from the injury report released by the University of Oklahoma, they could get some much-needed help back at the wide receiver position. We got our <laughs> fingers crossed, believe me. So... That would help so much. Uh, those guys can make, and I, I don't care if Jalil Farouk hasn't played in so long or you know, whoever. They're big play guys, and they know how to play football. And if they're able to play, they'll make a difference. And uh, two, three, four, five plays, you know, that can happen, and, and that can change the game. And if Deion Burks plays, we, we talked Absolutely. about he was all-conference in the Big Ten last year. He's an explosive player, and he's a mismatch. Again, a mismatch on the field that OU needs. Absolutely. He's a big play guy. And, uh, you know, so anyway, um, both those guys, if we get, you know, some, some play from them, I, I believe it'll make a big difference. They, they can make big plays. Now, Coach, you have been in a game like this as a number one team going up to Missouri. What's it like being on the sidelines? Is the stadium loud? What, what, give me kind of an atmosphere of how Missouri is. I, ne I never paid much attention to the atmosphere. I, I was always excited about it, liked it. I love stadiums. Um, you know, so it, to me it was just another stadium. Um, you know, it's not like it was 110,000 people, which we'd been in, but it was more, um, it was always 
positive. We knew we had to play well. So total respect for Missouri. Gary Pinkle was our head coach. Did a great job. For the whole time I was there. He, he's a great coach. He's in the Hall of Fame now. Yeah, for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really great coach. So we always knew we had to play well and be ready to play. And, you know, they showed, the I think, the 2011 game. We ran the fake field goal. Yeah. We're down. They're up 24-23. And I knew. I said three points isn't going to matter. That's going to put us up two. They had Brad Smith, a Youngstown, yep. Ohio guy that from my hometown as a quarterback was a great player. I'm like, we need a touchdown or this is getting away from us. Fortunately, uh, uh, Matt McCoy was able to throw it to Chris Chester. He caught it in his forearms, I think, right here. And uh, it, it propelled us to the win. But point being, we always knew going up there it was going to be tough. And uh, they know that this year as well. But you just got to play well and you got to make the plays that win. Yeah, that play was awesome. I still remember watching that on TV. That was, that was so, unbelievable. As you know how tight I am with Toby, Keith, uh, God bless him, rest in peace. Um, but Big T said after the game, he grabbed me, he goes, I knew good dang well you weren't, you weren't going to kick that field goal. He goes, two points isn't going to do it. So he goes, I was ready for it. He goes, I even told somebody on the sideline, he's not kicking this, and I, we didn't. It was, it was high grass, wet grass. Mm. It was a little further than I wanted. Trey DiCarlo was our yep. kicker. So anyway, I just sent it in like, let's go for it. And fortunately, it worked. Yeah, and I say this, the guy who caught the ball, who made this miraculous catch, not a wide receiver. <laughs> not a tight end either. No. Chris Chester, God God bless him. He played in the NFL for like yeah. 12, 13 years, but as an offensive lineman, yes. a guard. <laughs> so, But he was a heck of a player for us, uh, Chris. Yeah. So anyway, he made a heck of a play there. So did, so did Matt McCoy. All right, and we need some more Sooner magic on Saturday night as Oklahoma will be taking on Missouri. And if you want to know the weather forecast, thanks, Heather, for letting us know. It's going to be chilly, and it could be raining. So uh, bundle up, Sooner fans, as you're, you're heading on the interstate there. All right, let's talk about another big game in the SEC. Alabama at number 15, LSU. It's almost like a playoff eliminating game here in championship November. Alabama favored by two and a half points on the road. Wow. I'm going to go with LSU being at home. Alabama has shown a little weakness through the year. Being at home with LSU with something to prove, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to take the home team. Yeah, I am too. I think th these teams are very similar, yeah, right? Yeah, very much. And, and so. when you look at something like that, you go, okay, where's this game being played? It's being played in Death Valley in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at night, and everything is on the line for LSU. I like going with the home team in this yeah. game as well. And Alabama better cover up coming in and out of that tunnel. They're they're not they're they're pretty good at dumping stuff on you. Yeah. So I've uh, unlike the Missouri it. fans, you yeah. experienced something different in Baton Rouge. Anyway, yeah. but uh, there you go. I'm with you. I I think their fan, fans will be rowdy and. LSU will be looking forward to this. Yeah, and of course, uh, your friend, our friend, Kirk Curbstreet is going to be doing that game. Our thoughts and prayers with his family. Yep. They lost Ben, their dog, uh, this last week. I loved it when Ben got to come for college game day here for the OU Tennessee game. It was great. No, nah, he's a great guy and uh, hate that for their family and him. I, we're, I'm a huge, my wife, Carol, and, and I, huge dog people. And Amen. More, more her than me, but I love them. You know, how can you not? And we always yeah, you've have, loved on my dog here in the yeah, office. Yeah, and we always have three or four of them. So it, it hurts when you lose them, definitely. Amen, amen. All right, moving on to other games. A big one in the Big 12. BYU undefeated on the season, traveling to their arch rival, Utah. BYU favored by three. Utah four and four on the year. They've had a lot of injuries, obviously. They have not had the year that they thought they would have. Yeah, and I don't see it changing. I, to me, BYU has been too consistent. And, um, you know, they're at this point, you know, Utah's a team I'm sure they had circled ahead of the year. Like, this is a big game. So it's not like they would overlook them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think BYU continues to roll. Yeah, I look at the body of work this year. Yeah. BYU has played very well when everybody doubted them. Remember the Kansas State game? Remember the Oklahoma State game where they were right. able to come back and win? 
I just like BYU, and I like what you said, Coach. They're the rival of the other team, too. Yeah. It's not like they're going to come out of nowhere to get them. No, no. They this want the game Utah. They want. Yeah. Definitely. So they're, they're, that's one of those they've had circled since the beginning of the year. And I love the points. Again, you're talking about an 8 0 team versus a 4 and 4 team, and it's only three points. I like BYU in that one. All right, Michigan, the defending national champions, get to play Cinderella against. Indiana, the real Cinderella for many, many years. Indiana, 9-0. and They're favored by 15 points against the defending national champions at home. But that actually feels pretty right to me. I'm with you. Uh, Kurt Signetti, what they've done at Indiana has been unbelievable. Good for him. Uh, that, you know, it's not a fluke, no. I don't believe. They, they play well every week. They've beaten every team by 14 or more Amazing. points. So I'm, I'm with them. I, they do it again. Um, being that it's at home, I might have a different feeling if it was at Michigan. But, you know, it's Michigan's not. just been okay through the year, and Indiana's on fire. And you don't think Indiana at home wants to beat up on Michigan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. They want to show their fans. So anyway, I, uh, I think all that together. Indiana will have a big game. And, of course, the new college football playoff ranking came out. They came in at number eight. A lot of people felt very disrespected in Indiana, saying if you took the logos off the helmet, you'd have probably put them in the top three. And there's a good argument for that. Uh, there definitely is. I get that. People get used to certain teams ranked higher than other teams. And that's just natural bias. I mean, you can't – it's hard to fight that. Mm -hmm. They just keep proving it like they have. Uh, they'll be where they need to be. That's I mean, you got to give it to that guy, man. I, I, I don't really know him, but um, I, it's impressive what they're doing. Yeah, he will definitely be a finalist, if not the National Coach of the Year. And the other thing you always said, Coach, when, when you were the helm of Oklahoma, is everything will work its way out. Yeah. You'll play these teams. Everything will work its way out. It doesn't matter what the ratings are at the beginning or the middle. It's just what it matters at the end. Yeah, it, everyone... It's for talking, and that's good for radio, for TV, for viewership. I get it, but there's there's still so many, what, four games to yeah. go for a lot of teams and, and championship games. So a lot of this will, will, will keep being figured out. All right, we talked about an elimination game in the SEC that is being played between Alabama and LSU. There's another one between the Ole Miss Rebels and the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia will be on the road at Ole Miss, who looked very impressive last week. Georgia's favored by two and a half points. I don't know why it's hard to pick against Georgia, but as well as uh, Ole Miss played last week, I think Amazing. they got something going. So I'm, I'm going to go with Ole Miss to pull it out. Georgia's shown some. I know they've had big win against Texas, but they've showed some vulnerability in some other games. Being that it's at Ole Miss, I'm going to go with Ole Miss. And I, I am too. I'm going to pull the shocker on this one. I, and on paper, I would have said Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. Last week, what they were able to do, the right. amount of points they were able to score, and also the Jackson team Dart, the quarterback, has been playing lights out. But, Probably will be yeah. a Heisman finalist. And I think a lot of the players are feeding off of the coach. Right. The coach is calling out the fact that I guess we're not good enough to play in prime time. LSU's getting that game. We're going to have to go show it. I think this is the way that Lane Kiffin gets in the national conversation again. Yeah, definitely. And their their players are they're feeling it. That's a big win last week. I don't care who, but scoring that that what did they score sixty some points Amazing. and they they're they're uh, feeling it right now. And again, and Georgia's shown a little bit of some vulnerability. So we'll see. I know there's some Florida fans that wanted to see the name Lane Kiffin potentially becoming a Florida Gator coach. That isn't going to happen because the athletic director of Florida said they're sticking with Coach Napier, who has done a remarkable turnaround from the beginning of this year. The team is now 4-4. Four and four. They had a lot of fight last week against the Georgia Bulldogs. They're going to be on the road at Texas. Listen to this point spread. The Texas Longhorns are favored by 21.5 points against the Florida Gators. I'm going to take the Gators with the points. I, I, I think Texas will win the football game, definitely being at home. But that's a lot of points, and Florida is definitely playing better, which I love. Again, I always have some Gator blood in me. I always root for them. I've got a bunch of people that are, you know, that live in Florida that are friends of mine that are Gators. So I, I'm always rooting for them uh, outside of OU. But 
I, I think it'll be a tighter game than that. I really do. I do, yeah. too. I, I think this point spread is monstrous. And, and again, if you watch the game, Florida-Georgia game, with seven minutes left to go, you could argue that Florida had outplayed Georgia at some times. I just think that Texas is a good football team. I think they're going to win, but 21 and a half points is a whole lot. All right, a team that's been almost schizophrenic, if you've watched them, up and down, Miami. Number four yeah. in the country. They're 9-0. and They're favored by 11 at Georgia Tech. This is a team that could blow anybody out, or they could play them literally up to the wire. Or they let somebody hang around till yeah. the fourth quarter, and then they blow them out. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Cam Ward, right? The, Unbelievable the quarterback, quarterback. Love yes. him. What a player. And uh, just watching him interviewed and things like that, I, uh, I'm i a big admirer of what he's doing. What a, what a neat guy and playing so well. That's a big deal. When you got a trigger man that can play like that, yep. it, it, you know, I've had him, thank God. So, uh, you know, I'm going to go with Miami. I, I Just because of him, where they're going, what they're doing, they haven't had a season like this in yep. a good while. So I don't, I don't see them lightening up. It's one thing if you've done this a lot, you could fall asleep going with the Georgia Tech team, but I don't think they will. They haven't been like this in a, in a long time. So I think they also are one of those teams that have something to prove. Yeah, and they've had some crazy games recently against Georgia Tech. I think they're going to carry a lot of frustration in that game in Atlanta. I like Miami as well. All right, Clemson, who got shocked last week in a big way. They're going to be at Virginia Tech. Do they have a bounce back? Clemson is favored by seven points on the road. Wow. You know, I, I haven't seen Virginia Tech to have a great opinion there. I uh, It's at Virginia Tech. Yes, sir. I, I just, I don't know why I would have this feeling. I think Clemson will win, but I, I think it'll be a tighter game than that. I agree with I you. I think that, that loss a week ago hurts them. And it kind of takes away your momentum, a little bit of your, you know, feeling about what we're doing. You, you know, momentum's a big thing. Yeah. And losing that game last week, they I think, drubbed. hurts them. Hmm? I mean, they got drubbed. At yeah, they got beat quarter, well. It was 28-7. to seven. That's what I'm saying. Bad. So I, I think that... That kind of sticks with you a little bit. Like, oh, we're not quite as good as we thought. Mm -hmm. And any little bit of doubt that creeps in, it hurts you. Yep. So I, I would say they'll win, but I think it'll be a tight game. Yeah, I think the spread is right. I, I think it's one of those things. I think it's going to be a tight game, so run from it if you're a gambler. Yeah. All right, Army at North Texas. Army 8-0. and oh. They've literally blown out everybody they've played. Here's an interesting part. Ranked in the top 25 for the first time this late in the season in probably 50 years. It's been a long time. They're a three-point favorite, just three points I don't at get North that. Texas. I, I love Army in this game. <laughs> I'm with you. No, they do a great job uh, dealing with that offense is so difficult. Yeah. Um, that surprises me, three points. I jump all over that as well. I, I take Army big time. And you know this from your brother, a 5-5 five and five or a 4-4 four and four or a 3-3 three and three Army team having to face their triple option, all those things, it's a lot to deal with. This is an 8-0 and o, top 25 college football playoff potential team coming into town, and they're only favored by three points. No, that, that, that offense is an absolute nightmare to deal with. And, uh, you know, they're going to go for every fourth down because it'll be fourth and one, fourth and two. They're going to make it. 90% uh, of the time. If you turn the ball over once or twice, you're in trouble. They're, they're going to own the uh, time of possession and you're not going to, you're not going to be able to get back in the game. So I'm, I'd be all over army on this. Yeah. I, it's one of those surprising point spreads. All right. South Carolina at Vandy. Vandy is ranked in the coaches poll and the AP, not in the college football playoff poll selection though. South Carolina at Vandy. South Carolina is favored by six points. This is going to be a good football game. It is, and uh, Shane Beamer and South Carolina have really looked good. I want to take them, but Vandy again. Uh, Vandy at home. They have something to prove. I take Vandy in the points. Yeah, and I love the Vandy uh, quarterback showing all the text messages from the coaches of different schools in the SEC that were like, yeah, we're not interested. We're not interested. And he saved those text messages and reads them before every one of the games. Yeah, and he's he's played great. Uh, the team has played really well, being at home. Um, I don't know. I just feel like, again, they've, they've got something to prove that they'll be really motivated. 
their special team. And again, one of their few losses they've had this year was a double overtime thriller to Missouri. Right. So, I mean, this is a good football team. Should be fun. I like Vandy at home in a close one. All right, Oklahoma State at TCU. Who would have ever thought Oklahoma State would be 0-6, winless in the Big 12 Conference? They are traveling to uh, TCU in Fort Worth. TCU has not had a good year. They're 5-4, and four, but they are not winless in the conference. They are looking for bowl eligibility. TCU favored by 11, Coach. That's too many points, I think. Uh, both teams have had a tough year, but I'd, I'd go with Oklahoma State in the points. Um, I probably, if I had a guess, would TCU favored to win at home, but I think it'll be a tight game. Yeah, I think they're going to come out and they're going to throw everything they possibly can. I, I really yeah. do. I think that I think OSU showed a lot of life when they played at BYU. They should have won that game, right? There, there's some things when you look back over this season that just did not go well for Oklahoma State. I think they're going to be competitive in this game. They're going to do everything they possibly can to win this game. Not saying they didn't try that in the weeks before, but I think it's going to be closer than 11 points. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. All right, finally, the new college football playoff poll has been released. We have talked a little bit about it earlier in the different rankings. It was released on Tuesday night. I don't think anything else happened on Tuesday night. So somebody, a couple of people may have missed it. Yeah, that, they should have put it Monday or Wednesday, uh, yeah. right? I mean, not, not good uh, right. planning on that. All right, but let's talk about the poll. Oregon at number one, Dylan Gabriel, former Oklahoma quarterback, having an unbelievable year, Heisman finalist likely. Ohio State in at number two, Georgia in at number three. What do you think of those top three teams? I, I, I would agree with it. I, Ohio State had a tight, tough loss at Oregon. Close game. Uh, Oregon, to me, deserves to be number one. Uh, Dylan's playing great, Gabriel, but the team is. They beat Ohio State yep. undefeated. Ohio State's only losses to them in a tight game. Then they go to Penn State a week ago and win. So I, I like it. I think uh, that's right now how it should be. Yeah, and also for me, Georgia, they played horrifically bad against Alabama in that first quarter. But the rest of that game, their one loss on the year, they fought back. They played really well. They went to Texas and made quite Absolutely. a statement on national television yeah. uh, in a big way. I like Georgia there. If you go for the next three, Miami in at four, Texas in at five, Penn State in at six, I, to me personally, I think Indiana should be at number six because they're undefeated in the way they've played. They have not squeaked out any ball games, but I know what people say, Indiana's going to play these teams at the end, but that's only my gripe, I think, in the next three. I would agree totally. I, I like the other teams where they're at. Agree totally, but Indiana being undefeated, winning every game by 14 or more points, that's big. And Penn State had their chance. Yeah. At home with Ohio State to make a statement, they didn't. No. And and I don't. I guess it doesn't matter year to year, but their record against ranked teams Awful. through the years is not very good. So at some point, that matters to some degree. And and uh, Indiana, I don't know. If they've had any big wins. I don't know that they have. But, but they they're undefeated, everybody, yeah. and they've beaten everyone soundly. So. To me, until that's different, you, they should be up there being undefeated. All right, so now let's look at 7 through 10. Tennessee in at number 7. Indiana, as we mentioned, in at number 8. BYU at number 9. Notre Dame in at number 10. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I have a big gripe with any of that. Maybe BYU should be ahead. Uh, they've won soundly, it seems like, in every game. Um, you know, so, and they're undefeated. So, uh, you know, it, I never get too opinionated at this point because there's so many more games to be played. So it's it's fine for right now, in yeah. my opinion. And I like how they do the championship games for most of the conferences now. It's going to be one versus two in the conference, which is right. going to make it special to really help weed some of this out as well. That's a big difference as opposed to uh, by east-west division, whatever divisions. This you put the top two teams against each other, it's going to make a difference. It's going to be exciting. All right, and in an 11 and 12, Alabama and Boise State, just on the cusp, SMU, Texas A&M, LSU, and Ole Miss. Vanderbilt is not ranked in the college football playoff top 25. That doesn't seem right, being yeah. what they've won and, and they're you know in the SEC and the way they're playing. Are they 6-2, and two, is that right? 6-3. Uh, 6-3. Six six and and three. Three. Six and six three. And three. 
Yep. Yeah, the third loss hurts a little bit. But, but uh, they are ranked in the coaches poll and in the AP poll and yeah. in the power index are just not ranked uh, in the college yeah. football playoff. Anyway, um, again, they'll have, a, they'll have a chance here in the next few weeks to win some more games and make a difference. Uh, I don't know. I, I think all of those teams are fine. I'd uh, be interesting, very interested to watch A&M finish. Yeah. This season, um, you know, they're all uh, they're all good football teams. So it's, you know, Boise State. I'm always. Everyone talks in these big conferences, the Big Ten, the SEC. Who have they played? Who have they won? Who have they had significant wins against? And I'm always leery of teams that haven't had significant big wins. Yep. And whether it be, I'm not sure about Indiana because I'm trying to think of their schedule. Have they won any top 10, 15 games? Not. Has Boise State won any? You know, to me, I get it, that, but I think that matters. Yeah, the one thing you know, Boise hangs its hat on right now is that first week one game where they had it against Oregon and they played them really, really close. But again, Coach, it was not a win, and that's the thing that the committee really looks at the most. Definitely, you know, and, you know, who's beaten top 10, 15, 20 teams? And... To me, that shows a little bit of a badge. Yeah. And if you don't have it, I don't know, it, it should be a strike against you to some degree. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see how it all plays out. A lot of big games on Saturday night. I know we're all going to be watching and rooting on the Sooners as they're traveling up there to Missouri. For Coach Stoops, I'm Brad McMullen saying enjoy your weekend, everybody. And remember, for videos anytime, just tap on our video link.